Hey guys, what is going on? In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to use Premiere Pro CS6. Now, I'm going to basically teach you the basics of it. I know Premiere Pro looks really intimidating when you open it up, you have no idea what's going on, but this, uh, trust me, this is a really easy uh, movie editor to use. It is it is uh, advanced, it's highly advanced, so there's so many different things you can do, so many different modifications you can make with your video, different types of edit styles, but I'm going to just teach you the basics on how to use it. This definitely beats Windows Live Movie Maker if you've been using that till now because it's just so much easier to use. So if you haven't already, open it up and click on New Project. Now you don't really need to worry about this stuff first. You just need to name it, name your file. So here I'm going to name it Test123. And then the sequence file is basically the video file when you export the file, what it's going to be named. So you can name that whatever you want. Uh, I'll name it video file. Now you don't need to worry about any of these settings yet because when you import the clip, it's going to ask you what settings it's going to basically take the settings from your clip. So if you shot with an iPhone or you shot with a camera, it's going to take those settings, the 1080p or whatever, and it's going to ask you. So I'll just give you guys a quick look at that. So go, go ahead and click OK. And right now I'm going to import a clip. So I'm going to import a clip. Let's see here. Let's say OBS. I will import this clip right here. And all you need to do is basically drag your clip into this box right here. And it's going to automatic, automatically put that in there. And now what you're going to want to do is take your clip right here and just drag it and put it by video one and you're going to see audio one. Now it's going to ask you, this clip does not match the sequence settings and it's going to ask you to set them to the, to the settings which you've recorded upon, which I've mentioned before. So go ahead and just click change setting sequence or sequence settings. So here is the fun part. <clears throat> the main tools that you're going to be using here is the razor and the selection tool. Everything else is sort of more advanced uh, you definitely will be using it. You will check it out. Maybe I'll make a, a sort of a different part series of this. So this will be part one. If you guys are interested, I will make more parts. I will add extra parts to that. But let's just start off here. So the razor tool, basically what that does is it cuts the video. So if you want to say cut the video here, or you want to cut the video here, then it would cut it there. Now you would either click on this razor tool here, again that's the razor tool that I just used, or you can press C on your keyboard for a shortcut as a shortcut. Now in order to move this clip around, in order to select it, you would click the selection tool, which is right here, the mouse tool. Or you can press V, a shortcut on the keyboard. Now you can either move that clip around, you can move that there, you can move that back here, or say you did want to undo whatever you just did. So let's say you made a few cuts, you want to undo it, you would simply press Control Z and that would undo your moves that you just made. So that is pretty much the basics. Now, if you did want to zoom in, obviously there are certain parts where you're trying to get the audio out or in and you just can't find that part because it's or it's very hard to get to. Basically what you would want to do is you want to zoom in. So there are two ways of zooming in. You can either zoom into your clip. It's not actually zooming in here. It's zooming into your timeline so that you have extra stretch space to work with. So if, as you can see, it's stretching the clip so that I can find, I can find a certain part in the clip that I wanted to cut out in the exact moment. So I would, the way I'm doing this is I push plus or minus on the keyboard and that is above the, or the, right near the zero. So if I would continue to push minus, it would stretch it would stretch in and then this would stretch this out and plus. The plus would stretch it out, would zoom in, and the minus would zoom out. So as you can see there. Now if you did want to add a title, you would just right click here, click on new item, title, and name it whatever you want or just leave it like that. And now here's the cool part, is you can add text, you can play around with certain things. Let's say I wanted to add some text here. I would simply click on the text tool, which is right there, click here, and then type something out like, let's type out YouTube, the first thing that came to my mind. And you can just play around with it here. Check all the different options. 
And if you wanted to change the color, you would simply click on this right here, the color type. And as you can see, it just changes that. So once you're done adding a text, you just click on X there, and then you, you're gonna notice that you have now the text, which is in this box, and you would just drag it wherever you want on the clip. Now I know this might sound, this might be a little bit too much for you guys, but on that same note, when you get the hang of it, it's so much easier, so much quicker editing your YouTube video or whatever. Now there are so many more advantages to using Premiere Pro over Windows Movie Maker. You can add so many different audio files. Let's say you wanted an audio track plus you wanted an annotation. You could use, I guess you can do that with Live Movie Maker, but let's say you did want to add another type of music or different audio. You can you can pretty much do that here. You can add, I know it says one, two, three, but if you continue adding audio, it just continues to add different audio there. And same with video. You can add layers upon layers of different, uh, let's say titles. If I wanted to add another, the same title there, right there. As you can see, let me try to move that. See there, there are two of them now. If I want, I can just add another one. Oops. If you wanted to play around with your video clips, this is, this is definitely the way to go. I'm going to cut this clip in half. Just to give you an example, I'm not nothing in particular, nothing, uh, no specific place where I'm cutting it. I just want to give you guys an example. But as you can see, if I'm when I'm dragging it back, it magnetizes back there. And how you enable or disable that is right here. This is the snap. It's called the snap tool, or you can push on S. Now sometimes you might want to toggle that off or on, depending if you're trying to move around the clip and it's just going. You're trying to get in a certain spot as you can see and it's just snapping there and I don't want it to snap. So that's uh, something good to know. See that? So now I can move it close without actually snapping. But I'm just going to leave it to the snap because that's the way everybody pretty much does it and it's kind of useful. Now one more thing I'm going to teach you in this video before I go is annotation. Let's say you wanted to Let's say you did want to record your voice with this video. You would simply click on the segment. Let's say I have audio two right there. There's nothing in there. So I would, I would, you, I would want to use this right here. So I would need to find audio two up here. So as you can see, this is audio two. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on enable track for recording. So basically now I need to set my microphone. I need to make sure that Premiere recognizes my microphone. So I'm going to click on edit preferences and let's go to audio hardware. Let's go on ACO settings and an in input. I'm just going to make sure that's check mark. That's the microphone that I'm using right now. And for output, let's just make sure that's on my speakers or my earphones, whichever I'm using. I'm just going to click OK. Okay, you might not need to do this, it might be already in there, but just in case, that's pretty much how you do it. So once that's done, now I want to annotate an audio too. I want to record an audio too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for audio too right here, which is this. I'm going to click on the R button right there. I'm going to click on the record. And once I click on the play, it's going to start recording an audio too. And you guys will see pretty much, I'm sorry, I hear myself. And there, there you go, there is the audio clip right there. So now if I take that and drag it right there, and I'm just gonna push play. <laughs> and there you go. It's kind of difficult speaking when you hear yourself speak. So now here comes the important part. So once you're done, once you're finished with your whole video and everything is in order, Basically, what you want to do now is export the file. You want to export the the finished product. You want it to be you want it to be finished. You want to compose it. So you would click on File, and you would click on Export, and then Media. So once you click on Media, these are the settings that you're pretty much going to be using. So I'm going to show you right now. So the format you want to use H.264. That's the format that you want to use, and the preset. You can either use Android. I mean, I pretty much have my own setting right here. I use YouTube. Uh, you're not gonna have that. I set that preset as for myself. But basically, the frame rate that oh, it's on the wrong frame rate. But basically, the frame rate is I use 29.97, so that's 30 frames per second. 
And I'm just going to show you guys quickly. I used a Square Pixels, Square Pixels 1.0 NTSE main 4.2 VBR Pass 1. Uh, here's another. Here's something that's going to make a huge difference to your file. Since YouTube is limited to, I think, uh, 8 megabits per second, I believe so, unless they've raised it. You want to leave this at that, at, uh, I guess, 8 to 9. Again, if you don't want your files to be huge, you would keep it on the low side. And then the maximum bitrate, I usually keep at 50. I just saw somebody else's settings, so that's why I keep it like that. Now, filters, I leave. I don't touch the filters. Audio. AAC, 48,000 hertz, stereo, high, 320 bit rate, uh, multiplexer, make sure it's on MP4, standard, and those are pretty much my settings. Now, you will see it does say 154 megabytes, but that is wrong, because I used OBS to record this video, it's going to be like 25 megabytes, or something like that. So once that's done, once you pretty much set all the settings there, you would just click on export. Now I'm not going to click that because it's going to slow down everything, but once you click export, that you're going to make sure again, before you click export, the output name is video dot video file dot mp4. So in case you're not sure where it's outputting to, you can see here where the file is going to be output. And that is pretty much that is there. Premiere Pro, Premiere Pro, this is the default location. So you guys weren't sure where it is, you would click on Documents, Adobe Premiere Pro 6.0, and that is pretty much, that is where your file is going to be exported to, unless you've changed it somewhere. So that is going to be it for this video. I hope this video helped you guys. If it did, give me a thumbs up. It helps me out a lot. And if you guys did want to see a number two of this video, let me know in the comment section below and I will catch you guys in the next one.